Hello, welcome to SS Unitech, Susil this side and today we are going to see about the self-hosted IR. In the last two videos of this video series, we have discussed about the integration runtime and we have also seen about the Azure type of integration runtime. So today we are going to start with the self-hosted integration runtime. So what is self-hosted IR? So self-hosted IR is capable for performing data movement activities between cloud data stores and the private network. So for example, we are having the source that is in your on-prem environment, that is your SQL Server. And we want to move the data from your SQL Server on-prem environment to Azure SQL. So for that, we can use the self-hosted IR and this will help us to move the data from your on-prem environment to your Azure one. So next, running transform activities against compute resources in the on-premises or Azure virtual network. So for that also we can use the self-hosted IR. And self-hosted IR needs to be installed on an on-prem machine or the virtual network inside. So for example, if you are having your local system and we want to install the self-hosted IR there for loading the data from that machine or if your data is available in your virtual machine and we want to move the data from that virtual machine to the cloud then we can install the self-hosted IR directly on their machine and currently it's supporting running the self-hosted IR on an Windows OS it might be possible in the upcoming future this self-hosted IR will be supporting for other OS as well. So for implementing the self-hosted IR, here we can see. So for example, this is your uh, corporate firewall and here we can see the cloud. So the data which is available on your local that we can see here, like this is your on-prem storage. So if we want to implement the self-hosted IR where we have to load the data from this on-prem environment to the cloud. So we are required to have this integration runtime, which is self-hosted. So this self-hosted integration runtime should be available in the local that you can see here. So this should be available in your local and by using this self-hosted IR, we will be communicating with your on-prem environment to the cloud one. And it will also move the data from here to there or there to here. So both the ways we can move the data. So go to on the browser and we'll try to see in the practical. So here in the last video, we have created this Azure type of IR. In this video, let me try to create the self-hosted IR. So let me click on new. So here we can see the self-hosted IR should be available in the first option. So we need to select that and click on continue. Here we can see the self-hosted IR option. So it is saying use this for running activities in on-premises or private networks or view more we can also see the more detail let me click on continue here we have to specify the name so let me have the name as self-hosted ir for ssu machine that is on my local machine and after that here we can see the type that is self-hosted we can also specify the description, but I'm not going to specify here. Let me click on create. So it will take a little bit time. So here we can see it is successfully saved. Now, what we have to do, the first option we can see the click to launch the express setup for this computer or the second is the manual setup. In the manual setup, we have to download and install the IR and after that, by using this key, we can authenticate that. So I am going to go with the second, that is the manual setup. So let me click on this download. Here we can see this. So we can click on download. Here we can see the multiple options. Let me go with this one and click on next. So it will be going to start downloading. So here we can see. I am going to pause this video and we'll back once this download will be completed. 
so it is downloaded successfully now let me click on this so it will open so here it is preparing to install so we have to wait now here we can click on next now we can accept this and click on next then we can click on next now we can install this so it will take a little bit time to install so we can wait so here ir is successfully installed let me finish this and here we can see the option for the key 1 and key 2 so first let me try to open the ir which we have installed that you can see here and by default it is opening here now here we have to specify the key and that will be the authentication key so either we can add the key 1 or key 2 let me try to copy this key 1 and go back to there and let me paste it here and now click on register so it will be going to verify the key that you can see it is verifying now here we can see it is successfully and if you want to enable the remote access from internet then we have to enable this and click on next or we can check this checkbox and click on finish so it will be going to verify and it is registering your IR and it is connecting to cloud services here it is initializing the IR so here we can see the integration runtime is successfully registered now we can close this or we can launch the configuration manager so let me try to launch this configuration manager and here here we can see the option for the self-hosted node is connected with the cloud service that is good next we can see the setting so let me go in the setting and here we can see it is enabled with 8060 so this is the remote access from internet remember we have selected the checkbox so let me click on this change so once we had selected the checkbox so that's why it is enabled here so why we are required to select this so this is because if we are going to enable this access so we will be going to have the high availability of this self-hosted IR so what is mean so for example if we are having only a single node and that node is not available then your IR will be not available if we are going to set up the nodes with the multiple environments so that will be the high availability that we can see the second point here so it is more than two nodes is enabled that we have successfully enabled here so let me click on ok click on ok so here now it is restarting your host service so make sure while you are going to enable the self hosted IR on your machine we should go and try to change this option now we can minimize this now let me apply and here we can see it is successfully running and this we have created let me open this so everything that we can see right here and the nodes if we can go in the nodes so here we can see the node option uh, that we can see the uh, get the ip address that we can uh, see from here and here we can limit the concurrent jobs that we can set and under the actions here we can see the monitor and if you want to delete then we can delete under this so this ir we have successfully set up under this machine and let me cancel this now next we can understand we can associate a self-hosted IR with the multiple on-premises machine and virtual network in Azure that I was telling and these machines are called as nodes so if we are going to set this IR into the multiple nodes so that will be high availability option so if one node is not available it will be going to get that IR from the another node next we can we can have set the four nodes associated with the self-hosted IR so maximum we can set the four nodes next the benefit of having multiple nodes is the high availability that I already told you and it improved the performance and throughput during the data management so while we are moving the data from one location to another location 
or like on prem to azure or azure to on prem then your nodes will be going to have the high availability if one node is down then second node should be there so i hope guys you have a clear picture on the self hosted ir in the next video we will be going to do the practical demo on the self hosted ir so thank you so much for watching this video see you in the next video